Hi, everyone, and uh, welcome to our panel this week. We're here to talk about blockchain standards. Um, you know, blockchain, it's, it's very early um, in the blockchain industry. And as we've seen with other big technology transitions, like the internet, for example, um, early on, there were many competing standards or even a lack of standards. And what we've seen and what, what history has shown us is that agreement around standards is, is really important um, for technology to really grow and become mainstream. So I think blockchain is, again, in, a, in an early, uh, early stage of that. So we brought together uh, some experts today to, to talk about the topic of blockchain standards. So before we go further, I'd, I'd like to have uh, each of our panelists introduce themselves. So Eugenia, why don't we start with you? Sure. Uh, thanks, Tim, for uh, reaching me out, and it's a pleasure to be here. Uh, my name is Eugenio Reggianini. I am a former uh, experience in uh, corporate advisory, law, and uh, international investments, and uh, I'm now working as a freelancer to help a blockchain uh, solution provider to develop compliant products, mainly focusing on the European region, uh, but also past in, in Asia Pacific and in China as well. Great. Welcome. Ramesh? Hello. Uh I am Ramesh Ramadas. I chair the IEEE Blockchain Initiative. I also oversee the blockchain standards activities under the Blockchain Initiative. We have over, you know, um, eight published standards and several close to 50 working groups on different topics, uh, ranging from digital assets to supply chain to energy, IoT, and so on. So I'll stop there. Thanks for inviting me. Thank you. Niraj? Hey, hi, everyone. Uh, thanks for inviting me. I'm founder at DLT Labs. Um, DLT Labs is one of the oldest uh, company in the entire price blockchain. And we are the one who has implemented one of the big, biggest and the largest implementation in the history of blockchain at Walmart, where we have moved more than $1 billion uh, worth of uh, supply chain goods over the world. Um, I've been in the space for a very, very long time. I'm one of the first few. I've been in the space since 2011. I'm located right here in Toronto where this all blockchain got started. So I'm one of those few. Um, before um, I got this started with the blockchain 2011, um, my background has been in payments like um, uh, encryption of uh, payment. Apple Pay is some of the uh, initial projects which I do. Um, currently, I'm working as a CTO here at DLT Labs, implementing blockchain, enterprise blockchain throughout the world. Thank you. Thank you. Finally, uh, Yifan. Uh, hi, uh, everybody. Uh, my name is Yifan, Yifan He, and uh, I'm the CEO and uh, founder of Red Day Technology. Uh, we, uh, we are one of the founding members of blockchain-based service network. We basically build the infrastructure so we can, you know, basically enable traditional, you know, data centers to be blockchain friendly. And, uh, you know, we, we integrate all the permission and the public chains into this new cloud uh, environment. So uh, I'm not expert in <laughs> standards. So I come here, you know, just learn. But I, if I don't agree, I will attack. You know, no <laughs> difference. <laughs> okay. All right. Everyone's on notice that Yifan may attack at any time. Um, let's get, let's I'm, get to I'm the glad, first. <laughs> I'm glad it's a virtual event. Yes. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. I, I, although I, I can tell you that I was at an in-person event with, with Yifan earlier today for, for about five or six hours, and he did not attack a single uh, fellow panelist or attendee. So I think he's, I think he's actually pretty safe. Um, let's get into the first question. I think before we get to the topic of standards, uh, again, blockchain is at a, a very early stage and, you know, each of the participants here kind of comes from a different region or different part of the world. Maybe to, to start off with, we could get kind of a view from each of you of you know, the, the level or, or of blockchain implementation or trends that you're seeing um, in your region. And, and Niraj, since you've, you know, been involved for so long, you're there in North America. Why don't you tell us what's going on there? Uh, sure. Uh, well, 
I'll say that blockchain, as you rightly said, is still in its infancy, but it has come a long way. Um, the problem with enterprise adopting blockchain is that they all are trying to build a blockchain system from scratch and generally they fail to use prop, uh, platform which can drastically cut the time to production. So basically what we are seeing here in North America um, that companies are very excited, like really, really excited. I hardly see any company which is not talking about blockchain. In the initial days, it, were, it has been filled in the news that projects has failed um, for various companies uh, uh, all across, right? One after the other projects has failed. People have said like 95%, 98% enterprise blockchain projects are failing. I've been part of a lot of those, but now I see there are tons of companies with lots of successful project. And definitely I can give the example of Walmart uh, with whom we have been working now for more than two and a half years where they have been using this platform and has moved more than, as I said before, also more than $1 billion of goods using this blockchain on a, on a Hyperledger network. So it started slow, failed, but now we see it's, it's growing and it's growing in a huge way. Eugenio, what about, what are you seeing in in Europe? Um, well, uh, as we speak uh, generally about this uh, topic, which is, entails uh, blockchain in overall implementation in Europe, I would like to maybe to give my my vision from from market perspective, uh, which I think it's after yeah. you know the the pandemic and all the. Uh, the happenings, I see a quite uh, growing and stabilization in, in terms of developed market, market development of uh, potential retail use, so-called retail use cases, uh, which in my mind uh, um, provide the answer to um, a so-called business-driven need of creating the so-called so network effect. So, creating use cases which have been widespread users by um, a wide audience of people, of participants in the network itself. And uh, this is to say that from technical perspective, it's uh, starting uh, dominating uh, uh, from, uh, I mean, at least from application perspective, from uh, open permission solution network provider. That's my that's my opinion. And that the second the second uh, the second angle which I want to share from from European perspective is mainly focusing on regulatory, mm -hmm. because um, uh, I think uh, European uh, region is trying to take uh, uh, to take the lead on creating these uh, under the digital finance package, the first macro regional uh, framework for uh, digital asset management. Um, and so we have especially two um, proposals which are now coming into the enforcing regime, uh, slowly but steady, the, the MECAR uh, and the, the DLT uh, infrastructure pilot regime, we should, um, that should help be helpful in terms of adoption of specific use cases, especially in the, in the financial industry. Uh, so I think that the overall the, 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 um, the blockchain implementation in Europe, it's taking a more slowly but steady approach and mm -hmm. focusing on the use case which are, are solving some uh, business need and also taking into consideration a more casual approach in terms of uh, regulatory uh, management of digital assets. Okay. Uh, uh, so Ramesh, how about how about you? What are you seeing in your region? Uh, well, I'm uh, you know I live in the U.S., but uh, you know I'm I'm in Europe quite a bit, and you know I'm, I'm originally from India. So, uh, in fact, uh, you know when we talk about what's happening in the new region, it depends on um, like are we talking about talking about you know public chains or private chains, right? And then. Mm -hmm. Uh, public change is where all this, uh, you know, crypto stuff, you know, 
uh, DeFi, NFTs, you know, metaverse, you know, a lot of things are, you know, DAOs, so they're all happening in the public chain. And, you know, when you talk about government services or enterprise use cases, they're primarily built on private chains, right? You know, like mm. the one that BSN is building or Hyperledger or R3, R3 Quarta for banking. So when you talk about this question of adoption, it's like, you know, it's a forest, <laughs> you know, different trees are growing at different rates. And, uh, mm. but if you, uh, if you want to, let, let's talk about, you know, you know, if you talk about enterprise use cases, I think uh, you know, I talked about it. Um, in terms of government, uh, you know, Eugene, uh, uh, the FC project, right? The European Blockchain Service mm -hmm. Infrastructure, they're building a whole new infrastructure. And, uh, you know, like they want to put identity uh, on this FC for all the European Union members uh, and then degrees and, uh, and so on. So that's a big, you know, multi million dollar effort that's been ongoing. Uh, and then uh, as far as India, <laughs> You know, I just uh, heard from one of the ministers of the, the state. So they have like uh, in one, uh, one state, uh, there's a district called Hyderabad district, a blockchain district, Hyderabad mm -hmm. blockchain district. Mm -hmm. And uh, they have done a few pilot, uh, like, you know, like voting pilot and also like land record management, but you know, startups, they basically it's like an incubator supported by the local government. And they are like supporting, incubating startups, looking at voting and, land record and a few things like um also like tracking uh, there's a system in india like for subsidized uh like grains like rice and things like that that families can get and they were trying to put that on a blockchain to make sure you know uh, it's you know it's not disappearing <laughs> from the system hmm. so there are several things going on uh, in terms of pilot um but uh as far as large scale in india there was an example where the telecom authority of india uh, they, you know, they were they create a consortia with a few IT companies and the telecom mobile phone operators to actually create a solution to block uh, spam calls. So, you know, not not everybody can send <laughs> spams, and they have to be registered to this consortia that they created on Hyperledger Fabric. So, just to give you an exa example, like you can see, there's so many activities happening in the government sector, enterprise sector. Uh, they're all at different stages. Uh, what we can point out today is, I think it came up uh, in the you know in the previous comments. Everybody is building their own blockchain. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, uh, Europe is building FC, and of course, you know, uh, you have the BSN which you, you are you know uh, building in uh, in China, and then we have uh, you know uh, you know India. I think is playing with Hyperledger, but. You know, it's like everybody's building their own blockchain now. It's, mm. It gets interesting, right? Okay, what what is the standard? I mean, mm. can you really take data from one to other? I mean, these things are, you know, this is where interoperability comes in, correct? Right. I mean, forget exactly. about even, you know, forget about forget about interoperability between like, you know, uh, public chains and private chains. I'm talking about just <laughs> between the yeah. private chains and within the same region. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but Ifan, uh, oh, sorry, sorry, Tim. Uh, I just wanted to highlight, I think, two, two points which in my mind are quite uh, important in terms of standard creation, a bit at least in my mind. I mean, the first is uh, how uh, the institution are approaching with, the, with, the, with technology. So they try to create an, a little environment where they can play with it. And uh, so that brought the generation of different uh, efforts all over the world. Uh, but doing so at the same time they are starting uh, the initial activity for creating their own standards and so creating their own uh, common activities or common understandings over that procedures which then can lead to an harmonization in terms of sharing common ideas and understanding so right. to create a similar same, um, same operational process um, yep. That I think it's it's important I, to, to 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 open mind. I mean, um, we are we are uh, we live in a, in my mind in a, in a world full of standards. But if we are able to go beyond that standards on the common understanding, uh, which uh, link to the human and the software processes for having that services in place, we can of course find the linkage and bridge. To have these different product standards communicate each other, right? 
You find, let, let me just yeah. get, go to you quickly. Just get, just give us, you know, a minute or so on what's going on in China, because I think it, you know, it's different than other parts of the world. Yes. Uh, in China, we cannot use cryptocurrency. We cannot use public chains. They are basically illegal. Okay. <laughs> Not only cryptocurrency, but also public chains, because there's a, a bunch of internet regulations require KYC and the require the data can be deleted. So public chain cannot. So that's why uh, uh, that actually make China is very, very permissioned, you know, blockchain folks. So, so, so I think, uh, but uh, it actually helps China to more quickly in you know, a large scale to link blockchain technology to traditional business, not crypto, because there's no crypto. So it, 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 it actually put all the stops and, and large tech companies in China actually in that path. So it, it's actually good. Okay. But personal, mm -hmm. uh, I know uh, BSN has in China, we have been, you know, working on permission, the, uh, you know, blockchain, you know, inf uh, infrastructures. Uh, we launched the open permission chain, which is, you know, we basically convert the public chain into a, a permission version and put it, you know, install on uh, BS in China and provide public chain like, you know, environments, but you pay the gas with, uh, with uh, fair money. So hmm. uh, 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 actually for six months, we work on that. We we uh, uh, actually BSN teams uh, and you know we 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 changed our opinion. Okay, before that it was like a permission versus per permissionless. Right now we are officially is non crypto versus crypto. Okay, which means we are going to support public chains, but without crypto. So so the, uh, actually we just made an announcement like five hours ago. Uh, in August, uh, uh, BSN International will launch a new network. It, it basically becomes the BSN, uh, public BSN outside China. It's called the BSN Sparta Network. Uh, we will launch with uh, three non-crypto public chains. It's 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 exactly like Ethereum, okay? It, it's a non-crypto Ethereum, is Ethereum. The only thing is you pay the gas with fair money, or USDT, and and the point is that gas is fixed. The gas fee is fixed, very very low. It's a, you know, for example, a standard minting uh, NFT. It only costs you two cents US dollar forever. So 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 uh, we think we think you know uh, eventually the blockchain technology is a type of uh, you know infrastructure should serve all the IT systems in the world. Mm. Okay, you know, when you design system, if you need the public chain, just go to public chain. If you need uh, your back end, you know, private system, just put data there. So you have all the choices to make, you know, the most the fantastic IT system you want. So uh, that should be the, you know, the situation. Uh, which uh, also, also we, uh, we are not saying let's kill cryptocurrencies. It's, uh, we, we just think it's a layer two stuff. <laughs> No, you, it's an application. No, you cannot, uh, you know, build that kind of stuff into the infrastructure and uh, and basically force everybody to use it. So I, I think that's wrong. But uh, but uh, you know, uh, uh, I think uh, you know that's our uh, you know BSN's position. I think we learned from still we learned from permission, you know, uh, blockchain. We see also see the potential of public chains. So okay, let's um. Let's talk a little bit about uh, uh, industry standards and the role in technology adoption, which I, I talked about a bit at the beginning, right? Um, we know that standards like HTTP and TC TCP IP helped the internet grow and, and go mainstream because everyone was taking a common approach. You know, another example that I was involved in early in my career was USB, right? You know, prior to USB, Every PC maker had their own interface, had their own plug. Every peripheral had its own plug. And when the industry united around USB with help from IEEE, um, you know, every each printer could plug into each, you know, PC OEM, each mouse could plug into everything. And so those common standards lowered costs, really helped things take off. So let's then take that and layer that on the blockchain industry and and Ramesh, you know, you're with IEEE. IEEE is globally kind of viewed as a, you know, important body to help drive and set standards. What are you doing 
in the blockchain space right now? And and do you you know I guess the first question would be do you see do, do you see a need for more standards? And if so, what are you doing? Well, uh, you know what I'm going to say uh, it's not specific to blockchain, but you know every emerging technology. Um, you know, there are multiple standards organizations, IEEE is one of them, uh, you know, we are, you know, we are known for some Wi-Fi standards and Ethernet standards and uh, several like uh, standards that we use every day. Uh, so within IEEE, you know, as I was saying in the beginning, uh, we have like standards focusing on various uh, horizontal topics, like, you know, like we have a working group or public standard on data format, and there's uh, one on smart contracts, and there's also one on, uh, you know, uh, governance. And those are like, uh, those apply to all, you know, areas. But then we also have, we call them horizontal. The, we also have standards working groups on like energy, which is making pretty good progress and IOT and, uh, you know, and so on healthcare. So, uh, well, we have a lot of, working groups, you know, a few published standards, like eight. And uh, there, there are also other standards organizations working on this as well, which is, uh, you know, ISO has, you know, PC, uh, you know, on blockchain, and then, uh, you know, San, San like Etsy. So there's standards work happening. I usually have a quadrant, you know, I'm not able to share it today. Like the quadrant is like, we have four uh, groups of organizations. You have the international uh, our global standards org, such as ISO, you know, IEEE, Etsy, SEN, Sanilac, and all of them. Uh, and then we have the alliances and consortia, you know, they, they create specs. And then we have, uh, you know, some, you know, W3C and, you know, I, uh, you know IETF and uh, OASIS. And then the fourth quadrant I usually have show is like you know, all the open source, you know, like which I think which is not of uh, interest today, the public chain folks, they have their own coding. So, mm. This work happening, there's probably, you know, uh, several, like, I can say probably around close to 50 <laughs> standards working groups if you combine published and ongoing work, mm. uh, you know, look at the whole landscape. So now it's, as I said, this is, this is not unusual. This happens to pretty much every emerging uh, technology. Now, we, we try to, you know, like IEEE and European Commission, we try to bring all the standards organizations together. We've been, you know, discussing about how to harmonize and all that. Uh, but to step back, you know, there's a cycle, right? You know, bringing experts together and creating standards is the first step. <laughs> and then the implementation adoption is like the real deal, right? So, and then, you know, once you do that, then the market, you know, like the commercialization, those things will come like, you know, the, third part of it. So uh, I don't have a simple answer, but there's, you know, a lot of, uh, just like we have a lot of, you know, blockchain architectures being developed by different uh, countries and different enterprises. Uh, we also have standards too, <laughs> different organizations developing. You have a lot of, so you have a menu, uh, but uh, I mean, just to give you one example that I was, I had a meeting with the, you know, uh, European Commission uh, policy officer last week and, uh, a real example is like they use the W3C, you know, uh, he said the verifiable credentials to do the FC project. Uh, but we also have several IEEE standards uh, that are like, for example, we have one uh, IEEE 2418.5 on energy, which is being used by several small startups to build POCs. Hmm. So, uh, yeah, there's a lot of things going on since, you know, blockchain is, is like, it's like use cases are like, you know, hundreds of thousands of them, right? Depending on which sector you talk about. And each sector has its own, you know, like uh, challenges, you know. So, so it's really, you know, people ask, is there one standard? Maybe for data format and terminology, you can have one standard. But when you talk about use cases, you know, even supply chain, you know, there's a pharma supply chain versus, you know, you have... You know, uh, so this, it's a very complex field and we may end up, uh, the reality is we may end up having multiple standards and, you know, folks may have to choose the one that works for their use case. And if it doesn't exist, you may have to create one or you can have like, you know, you can use the base standard and then add, you know, revisions to it for your specific use case. So blockchain is a complex field. You know, you have so many architectures, so many standards, so many use cases. So. Hmm. 
But it, it sounds, um, Ramesh, what, a lot of what you were talking about sounds like, like if you're talking about use cases, kind of standards at the application level, right? Um, that, what is, about, that is correct. That is yeah. correct. A lot of the alliances, alliances, like, you know, they are focusing on, for example, Mobi, right? As an example, it's a use case. Uh, mobility, uh, all the automakers. Yeah, please go ahead. You, you wanted to say something. Well, I, I was just going to say, I, I think that's one layer, but maybe I was, I was going to shift the font a little bit. You know, you know, the BSN is really an infrastructure, right? And right. Um, yeah. maybe you could talk a little bit about, you know, I think the work that you're doing is more at the infrastructure level rather than the application level. I mean, what, do you, what are you seeing or thinking about in terms of standards at that layer? Because I'm not an expert on standards, but I also uh, always think about the standards. Uh, uh, I think, uh, you know, there's actually three aspects when, I, uh, when we talk about standards. You know, I just read some, we probably can discuss. Uh, the, the first one is when you need a standard. You know, uh, personal, I think, uh, you know, for, for when you need a standard, it's, uh, it's not too early, it's not too late. Because if it's too early, you basically put the restriction on the you know free innovation, right? And if it's too late, I mean the market already has its own standard. There's you know the the, the effect of standard become weak because it's no longer leading something. So when is the standard should be? Then the next question is: Is the blockchain industry is the right timing? Is that too late mm -hmm. or too early? Personally, I think it's too early. <laughs> okay, uh, that's for actually the. I, I actually second, do agree with you, Ethan. Yeah, uh, and the second aspect, actually, what uh, uh, you know, uh, Tim just mentioned, which layer it goes, you know, it, 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 it's in the very very underlying layer level or its infrastructure level, uh, you know, it's it's in the communication level, it's in the application level. So 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 it's uh, because from my my understanding, if it go moves more you know, more up, more close mm -hmm. to uh, uh, application, it also put a more restriction on innovation. Okay, mm -hmm. so so the, the more uh, and uh, 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 so that's a that's a second aspect. You know, I I think we can discuss it. And the third one is cost. It's cost. Uh, the cost means, uh, you know, for some standard, you know, it's once out there, nobody need to put money in research, just take it and use it, right? So that's why personally, I think it should go to the one, you know, the layer that costs too much money for each company. <laughs> so, so, so then, you know, we work together, build this standard, then nobody need to put money in and just take that. <laughs> and, and and build application on top of so so uh, that's actually you know uh, so for, for first question uh, personally I, I i think it should be not too early not too late but it's something people begin to invest money and that money you know if the whole industry say especially the leaders and the experts say okay it's begin to waste too much money <laughs> okay let's say all sit down come a standard divide the work and save some money for all of us and the the, the second one I, I think most standard should be in infrastructure level uh, I, I mean even actually most of is in communication level like HTTP TPS you know how to come in uh, and the third is uh, I think it's uh, you know it's it's uh, 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 the cost is should be in the we call the basic research so, so it, it, that's why I, I I think it should be on the infrastructure level, uh, and also for IT systems, uh, uh, you know, uh, for information technology. I uh, personally, I think most the standard is related to interoperability, right? So, so everybody build uh, uh, their own you know application, whatever. But when they need to connect to each other, that's actually where the standard comes in. So you know helps a lot. So you know at least we can talk to each other. I mean that's actually very very important. Just think about that. This our human being haven't solved that problem yet. Most people cannot talk to each other. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Google Google Translate. 
Yeah, Google, Google Translate. Translate. Yeah, but but yeah. most people don't even know how to use Google Translate. So that's actually a basic human problem. <laughs> so mm -hmm. so and we solved for the IT system first. That's a yeah yeah. That's basic my take. I think we we can discuss that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, honestly, I personally think that uh, most of the standards which are coming up from the application at the application layer, uh, they work as a response of the fact that for companies who invested money into develop products, so they need to uh, get some accreditation from the market. So, so to the, they try to create establishment and value over that product, so to create a standard for itself. Whether it is, uh, I mean, a set of requirement which has been uh, built under, a, I mean, a, um, in a consortium or by one big uh, tech or by a, a small startup which then became a unicorn. Um, what I, I mean, to follow up on what also Ramesh and, and Ivan, in my mind, they 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 agree is that um, there are different standards working at different layers and they're trying to solve different problems at the same time. I mean, application layer, they usually try to solve issues which concerns specific business industry yeah. over that application that are working. Instead, infrastructure project, they work on uh, uh, solving the specific communication mechanism or uh, other regulatory um, uh, micro-regional uh, restriction in order to create harmonizing framework so uh, that a uh, data information which has been transmitted uh, from a region to another one it can be then it can be then uh, um, degrouped and uh, shared to different uh, uh, nations working along that region that's yeah, why in my fast, mind a, 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 a lot of uh, infrastructure uh, project are linked to specific region in Europe, Ipsy, in uh, China, BSN, and then we have blockchain in South America, and so on. Makes sense. Totally makes sense. Uh, mm. uh, when I was little, right? Uh, where uh, when I was very young, you know, I, uh, you know, because uh, uh, people around me, you know, couldn't even speak English. They never, you know, even meet someone from other country. And uh, I heard you can. Uh, you know, pick up the phone and and there a number. It goes to United States. I was like, how they even connect to each other? Are they are they speaking using the same numbers? You know, one two three four. It probably even different. How they even call each other? You know, it's the standard. <laughs> so they can call a number in the United States and they can talk. <coughs> Amazing technology. <laughs> Nirash, what do you think? You've been, you again. You've been involved in this a long time. You've been, you know, deep on the Walmart project. You mentioned. Do you do you do you see standards being important? Yeah, uh, this is one of the discussion I'm I'm being part of, uh, as you rightly said, since 2011, where we talk too much about standards. What we forget. So okay, let me start this way. So first of all, I agree. I agree with, uh, especially with Ramesh and, and also like with everyone, standard is needed, right? Like any technical system, any system needs techno uh, it needs some standard by which they can talk to each other. Blockchain is a very unique technology that when blockchain got started, See, the core concept of the technology behind the blockchain has existed for decades. We have to just take a step back then when the first white paper got published and then followed by Ethereum and Fabric, right? None of the white paper ever said that, hey, uh, for the blockchain, create a new technology. But what blockchain is, blockchain is a like my definition, it's a very beautiful collection of technology which has existed for decades. Like any component of blockchain you pick up that has existed. Now coming to the topic of standards, as I said, whether at a, a network level, infrastructure level, application level, standards are needed so that the two blockchain can talk to each other. I know different companies, different organizations are trying to adopt it differently. 
what we are saying mostly here in North America, and we are also doing exactly the same thing is, is trying to go a step back and see if some standards already exist. And then we take that standard and adopt it within the blockchain itself. So for example, at an application level, as Ramesh said, like different industry has different standard. For example, in case of freight, right? Where all these truck companies, they mostly use EDIs. Then there are existing platform, right? So if we think of implementing blockchain to enterprises, we have to ensure that it can talk with, with applications like SAP. It can talk to Salesforce. It can talk to their TMS. So we need to enable those standards also so that blockchain, the platform can talk to all these systems. And when it comes to infrastructure, definitely there are different level of infrastructure level communication. And this is where like Web3 and many more standards are coming. But in the meantime, we can easily use existing gossip protocols or messaging protocols to talk to each other. Well, in short, what I'm trying to say here is, our main aim here is to make sure enterprise blockchain or the blockchain itself gets adopted in the fastest way possible. And I say one thing, which I've been saying for a very long time, we have to make blockchain useful. No one wants just the technology, but everyone wants a application. Everyone wants to use the technology, take, take internet, right? It's not that you buy internet, but you buy food over internet, you buy uh, clothes over internet, you do transaction over internet, but you don't care about the internet. This is what we need to do over the blockchain where we have to make mm -hmm. blockchain useful for common people, for common enterprise by reducing the barrier to start choosing the blockchain right from day one. Mm -hmm. and, what, and, and what do you think, um, Nirosh, what are those, the biggest barriers? Um, the biggest barriers I say is invention itself, right? Um, uh, I'm saying as uh, it was rightly quoted one place, there are too many companies, right? Um, I mean, say there are too many companies trying to create blockchain platform, sorry, uh, blockchain as a, a new blockchain, right? I'll say in 2016 to 2018-ish, every day a new blockchain was formed every time and if you go and i've done the study if you take all these blockchains you start categorizing it i'll say 70 percent of them coming from ethereum they take ethereum they modify a bit and they launch as a new blockchain 20 percent come from uh, uh, bitcoin based and rest of them comes from fabric based hyperledger fabric so there are only two three categories and means my apologies there may be few more but on a broader level there are only two three categories and what companies are doing is what they are just creating something new i think like uh, uh, me and like few other people like who got started i think we are culprit uh, where we have not done a very good job at the start where um, we should have made blockchain more easier for enterprises or for companies or for people to adopt. What I'm trying to say is, right, I see that we are stuck in a loop. We, are, we continue talking or we continue doing same thing again and again. I don't think that blockchain is in its that infancy that we have to talk at the core level. Now is the time where we have to start talking of about the next level for example I'll, I'll i'll make it very clear like what i'm trying to say for example today when we have to develop a web page we don't talk about html we don't talk about internet but we talk mm -hmm. about some modern um, uh, designing tools where you go and drag and drop and you develop a web page right mm -hmm. this is what we need to with, do with the blockchain as long as we will like we as uh, all of us here right and many other people right like blockchain promoter let's say this way, until we will not take our discussion to a next level where we are not able to build platform solution where companies, enterprises just go and start using it without thinking about what's the standard behind it, what is the technology mm -hmm. behind it, we will never be able to take the blockchain to the next level. So how do we do that? 
platform today today we we and um, and and don't take me wrong that i'm trying to promote anything from the company but this is what i've been suggesting for a very long long time mm. we need to move towards a platform based solution so mm. for example from a from a bsn perspective i was uh, i've i've seen few of the stuff so this is what is needed what dat is this is what is needed where we have to hide the complexity behind the scene right mm -hmm. we need to create more and more platform i think it's high time where we have to stop talking about the blockchain itself it's a technology it will stay behind the scene what we need to talk about is platforms easy to use platform where enterprises companies people developers they can use they can come they can select they can drag and drop they can deploy their blockchain network then they can come they can deploy their blockchain application so we need to start talking about on based on platforms where companies can come they can configure and they can deploy in matter of days they don't have they should not be able to they should not think that hey how my blockchain is going to work they should not think that you know where my nodes are going to be spread across mm -hmm. they should not think they should not think about security i can give you an example for walmart if we would have stuck with that you know how many nodes are going to be there how the carriers will use the nodes nothing will get solved when we started working with walmart or when we work with any of these companies we don't talk technology like there was a time when technology used to come first now we talked about solution like creating the solution because hmm. technology solution should be automated behind the scene like aws you don't talk about why cloud is so interesting because now you don't talk about hardware okay how much of uh, where my hardware is situated will it have electricity or not how much of ram is there right but it has become so easy that you know you go drag and drop you create your stuff and you start solving the problem so solving the problem is more important than for businesses i'll say and technology should be left for few companies like you know few platform companies behind the scene so you, so abstract away the 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 technology itself right exactly right because it's high time now for blockchain no one should buy blockchain people should buy application based service because yeah, I, would, I would call it the application focus and business focus because you have to be uh, really um focus on developing uh, the interaction in which the society interacts with your function you are delivering to and um, and you can do it on the pro on the pro on product perspective by building your application or by by letting your 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 users your consumers defining your their own application rules but also you have to structure your own company in a way that can deliver efficient business services that's why in my mind uh, we are standing now i see many many blockchain solution providers structuring even themselves as a company in a more business dimension which hopefully should lead uh, the industry to a more inclusive uh, uh, adoption globally and that's a process just, because as a software company they start from a tech perspective from from the core from the product and then they develop okay. ramesh ramesh was raising his hand back there he's he may be about to run out of batteries no no i have battery uh so i wanted to i think the folks on this call uh, know this you know when we say interoperability there's different levels of interoperability there's the mm. data level there's the yes. logic like smart contract level there's the you know infrastructure communication protocol level and there's you have you know application level there's so many levels right when we say interoperability it's like what level are we referring to is one question i just want to put that aside the other thing i wanted to bring out was look even if you're building you know the bsn like you're building this infrastructure you still have to provide the specifications to the application builders so they know what what are they building on top of so in a way that's uh, you know you may call it specifications you know uh, because it's coming from you know an alliance or consortia usually called technical spec uh, so you still have to document you know what's in the infrastructure layer so mm -hmm. that that's how you could build the ecosystem right so they yeah, want to build the ecosystem you got to you have to show what's in a, what's in the base uh, in the base layer so 
like this is related to the question we were you know starting in the beginning ifan i think about we started this about like yeah. do we start the uh, standard early or you know wait or is the right time but if you're building an infrastructure you we don't have a choice correct you do have to create the specs documented specs and provide this to your potential you know i guess clients who want you know who would like to build on top of your infrastructure so mm. Yeah, I think you ha- you have to do it in parallel. Sometimes it's you know, unfortunately, yes, yeah. exactly, exactly. I, I I totally agree. I totally agree. <laughs> This is actually the standard is very very complicated. Uh, uh, you know, every time when I think about that, you know, it's uh, because we are not uh, a nonprofit. You know, oh, if we are nonprofit, we we are a university. You know, when we do research, it's yeah. different. But now we are a commercial company, and when we provide specs, we cannot provide a too complicated spec. Nobody can follow, and we cannot, you know, it's very very small spec, and uh, you know people yeah. don't even treat your platform as a platform anymore because you know it's basically nothing. Nobody know yeah. what to do with you, so it's it's really really difficult for. That's, that's that. why. Yeah, that's why actually from I Triple E, right? You guys, the experts on the, you need to combine everybody together. You know, there's from the government side, from the private sector side, from the 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 the, the, the academic uh, side. You you put everybody here and discuss, form those groups, right? Form those groups to discuss yeah, yeah. from all the yeah. perspective. Come up with the best the solution. Everybody think, okay, the cost I can I can handle that cost, and I can handle that kind of yeah. you know complicated this back. Then then it become a yeah. universal one. Then everybody <laughs> follow by following uh, existing spec always the cheapest. So <laughs> that's I think uh, how that works. It's it's really really complicated the process you know it's it's really people even fighting each other you know this company say <laughs> okay oh uh, i already spent money you guys need to follow me right that company <laughs> said okay i spent even more money <laughs> 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 you know, it's a, i i i totally understand it's actually the the standard is so like i said we don't even have a language standard yet for <laughs> human beings so that's why you know thousands of years right. We don't have one. <laughs> we, we kill yeah. each other. We fight each other, and we don't have <laughs> one language to, to speak. So, so uh, that's why I think this is actually, you know, today's topic is really, really important. One of the most important things in the technology war. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, in the in the language, we have translators, and in, you know, in the world of uh, technology, we have adapters, right? Going out bridges, yeah. adapters, you know, connecting the yes. things. That's yes, exactly. Uh, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah R- others, Ramesh, yeah. Ram- Ramesh is, uh, you know, being part of a, a, a body like IEEE. If if you had a company in the blockchain space, and we all agree that it's very early, and they were looking to, you know, they had a, a specific problem they saw in the industry, and they were looking to. Um, You know, sol- create a standard to 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 solve that issue. How how would they engage? You know, I triple E in that. Like what what yeah, advice so, would you? Uh, have? I, yeah, I want to I want to clarify one thing you just said. Uh, you said early. I don't think it's early. Like as I was saying, you have to do this in parallel. Like you know, BSN as Ifan was pointing out. You know, they are documenting the specs as they build. Uh, you know, it cannot be too complex, and it cannot be mm-hmm. too simple. Where it doesn't, it show all. You know, there's a trade-off, like how much you capture. But it's not early. Uh, but early, uh, and then coming back to coming back to your question about like how I I W works. I W is a you know neutral organization. You know, we have four hundred thousand members in 160 countries, and if you talk about standards, we have over two thousand standards. Uh, you know, and uh, If you look at the people who are involved, you know there's like thirty thousand people, you know, are involved in developing standards. I'm talking about the whole whole picture. Uh, now, it's really driven by, you know, the market. You know, like volunteers can come together and say, "Oh, this topic is of interest. We want to create a standard." We have, you know, our our we have the process and the you know platform to do that. We just enable them. Same with same thing with companies. If company one company says, "I know, I think this is an area or you know, use case of uh, you know interest," 
we tell them, okay, let's create, you can come and create it. And we do a call for proposal participation. We invite all the stakeholders that are interested mm -hmm. on the topic and let them drive. And, you know, they take anywhere between uh, a year to two years, depends, and it could be even longer. In some cases, some alliances already have developed the standard and they come to IEEE, they want to make it an IEEE standard. In that case, mm -hmm. it goes through fast. You know, they already have done the mm -hmm. work before. Uh, but it's really driven by... You know, it's not like IEEE staff is pushing any standards work. It's actually they're facilitating the the need that's coming from the volunteers, experts, and uh, companies. So the, the you know staff just helps with the you know the back end process and having this pl platform. So that's why we have a lot of working groups. It's an IEEE is an open system. I mean, for example, you can just come in today and hey, I want to. For example, here. I'm at the you know World Economic Forum Davos here, right? I ran into uh, a lawyer. She used to be at the uh, you know one of the ICC International uh, Justice Court, right? Um, and she's like, oh, there's how do you handle you know disputes on blockchain? Uh, there's no standard. I said, well, we could help you create this, and she wants to you know lead it. <laughs> she mm -hmm. wants to lead that group and uh, you know create a standards. So well, start of standards working group for like creating uh, disputes uh, disputes on blockchain. Hmm. And uh, so we just provide the platform, you know, we will help them, help her, and she would, you know, we go through the call for, she would bring her friends, people, experts, she knows all the stakeholders, and she, will, you know, she could work on it and create a standard. So it's, it's an open system. It's a little hmm. different than other organizations, uh, you know. Um, so, you know, I'll stop there, and so we can give time to others. <laughs> you have two minutes. Okay. Okay, good. Well, I think you know we're about out of time here. I want to see if anyone has any any kind of closing thoughts about the uh, the standards efforts in in blockchain before we uh, before we run out of time. Uh, well, personally, I still think uh, you know it's uh, uh, crypto is uh, you know hurting the blockchain adoption too much. We need mm -hmm. to take out the crypto, then set the standard. Okay, <laughs> with crypto there. No standard, you know. Like uh, actually, uh, Nijie, uh, did, you know, said it so passionately. Describe the situation. Actually, the biggest uh, barrier to solve that is crypto, because it's, as long as the cryptocurrency is there, no traditional IT system want to build any application on them because it's way too expensive. Okay, that's that's actually something we really think, you know, it, 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 you know, just, I, I just want to, you know, repeat myself, we are not trying to get rid of cryptocurrency, just move to layer two, okay. Uh, what I could do is to, I just wanted to share my, my experience in uh, with the specific standards, because I think it may be helpful also for the audience. Uh, um, I came across, um, I work mainly in the financial industry. I mean, fintech providers are my clients. So, um, and the financial industry was one of the first industry getting along with this technology in a different kind of environment and use cases. So, um, at that time I was um, leading a research project along the Hyperledger Foundation. And um, that standard, which at the time was calling the distributed ledger payment commitment, was uh, a little bit uh, industry and uh, but isolated standard working in, uh, especially in the in the trade and finance industry, uh, which is really um, let's say a team sports industry because you need uh, you need a bank, you need in, you need the insurance, you need logistics companies, you need traders, buyers and sellers, you need suppliers, manufacturers. And so um, my, my research study helped to find a different uh, uh, solution provider who were linked at their products with that standards, which was open source. And so uh, by doing that, we found the different solution providers globally working out. And so by doing so, uh, as a consequence, we envisioned a market in which different solution providers for different end users would have been able to use in practice that standards which was open source to project different business service lines across the globe and um, that's that's experience which uh, of something which i've done 
um, are all over 2020 and 21. Hmm. So to come back to Ramesh, I, uh, probably it's not too early, but uh, if you see the long story, we are still uh, in the early stage of the story. Uh, but uh, I totally agree. Uh, um, government, I mean, institutions, uh, solution providers need to work uh, at the same time on uh, developing uh, understanding and developing practices so that the global, uh, the global adoption can be really capillary and, uh, and uh, effective, actually. Thank you. Niraj, last with you, any, any final comments on standards in blockchain? Uh, uh, I think I'll just reiterate what I said before also, right? Like, you know, um, definitely standards are much needed. Um, before, the only thing we should keep in mind is that before we invent anything new, we should always go in the past and see if something already exists. If something exists, definitely we should use before we create new, because mm. creating new is not just about creating, it's also about adoption, which takes a whole lot of time. So if we can reuse something, it's great. And then my final comment is towards the entire blockchain com community is the future of blockchain is, our, is in our hand. Whatever we do, let's make sure blockchain is useful and blockchain is useful today. There has been lots of unsuccessful things with the blockchain, which is making blockchain look not so good. Now is the time, now means like today is the time where we have to take blockchain out. And also we need to build whether platform, infrastructure, application, whatever, in such a way where we can say that any non-blockchain system can come and compete with us with that blockchain application or whatever it is. And it should be better than that, if not at par. Mm -hmm. in, other, in other words, we cannot just take an excuse that, hey, blockchain is new, therefore our application is a bit slower or it's not working. I think it's high time we have to move away from that excuse. On that note, thank you so much. Great. Thank you, Niraj. So I want to I want to thank all of our panelists for being on today. It's a it's a weighty subject, uh, standards in blockchain, and uh, thank you all for your thoughts. Thank you, thank you, thank you guys. Thank you, really appreciate. Bye bye. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.